Hello YouTube chess lovers and my friends, this is Gunjan here. Welcome to the 22nd episode of my chess trap series. In this episode, I'm going to show you a wonderful high profile trap in Chigorin defense from the black perspective. The opening arises after the following order d4, d5, c4 and now the characteristic Chigorin defense move knight to c6. Here it doesn't matter whether your opponent continues with knight to c3 or the move knight to f3. Let's say in this game knight to c3 happen and after knight to f6 and knight to f3 we reach to the critical position of this line. Here my recommendation is you should certainly capture on c4 and enter into the main line. The old move in this position is d5. However, in the recent time this move doesn't score well. The simple reason is after knight to a5, black is hanging on to the c4 pawn and I have attached a recent model game of Indian rising star Pragnanda where he crushed his opponent in 32 moves. So kindly check it out. Probably that's why in the recent era, white is mainly focusing on the move e4, which in fact very logical, grabbing the space in the center as well as trying to regain the pawn. Okay, no problem, black continues with bishop to g4. So pinning down the knight and threatening bishop captures f3 and then knight captures d4. Something white needs to pay attention immediately. So the main line continues with bishop to e3, protecting on d4. Black plays e6 and after white regained the pawn with bishop capture c4, black pinned down another knight with bishop to b4. And this is something I like about Chigorin defense. Unlike other black openings, Chigorin is very active and aggressive opening. As you can see, black has already created a threat on capturing on e4. So accordingly, white has tried two moves, queen to c2 or queen to d3. In this episode, we are going to concentrate on the modern move, queen to d3. However, if your opponent continues with queen to c2, then I have attached a sample line in the PGN, which will give you a very good idea how to play such a position queen to d3 and black plays this tricky move bishop to h5 and the trap is set right here. Now as per the online database 70% of the games continues with the move a3 which I personally found a great inaccuracy in this line as white should have castle first. Nevertheless we should see what happens after the move a3 as white straight away fallen into our trap and the line goes as follows. Black first capture on c3, pawn capture c3 and now comes this bishop to g6 attacking twice on e4 and at first sight it doesn't seem like white is having any trouble as white can easily defend that pawn with either of these two move but in fact it's an illusion as in all the lines black is going to get a pawn. So let's see each reply by turn and find out what's wrong in that. The first move I want to consider is bishop to g5 pinning down the knight and thus saving the pawn but in fact black indeed can capture on e4. Well, if queen moves, then after bishop to d5, black is a healthy pawn up. So that's not a solution. And the critical line goes as follows. Bishop captures f6, counter-attacking the queen. Bishop captures d3, bishop captures d8, bishop captures c4. So regaining the piece back. And after bishop captures c7, yes, indeed, the material balance has been restored. But look at the white. First thing, he cannot castle on the king side. And this backward c3 pawn is a clear cut target in the middle game. Just to illustrate my point, 
I like to show you a game between two 2200 rated opponent where black continues with rook to c8 attacking the bishop, bishop to f4. Now black target the c3 with knight to e7. So idea is very simple, knight wants to go into the d5 square and attack on c3. And white decided to meet this with counter attacking move knight to d2. Okay, knight to d5 indeed happened on the board. So as you can see, black is attacking two spots. So white response is force. White has to play bishop to e5, counter attacking on g7. But after the following sequence, that is f6, attacking the bishop, bishop to g3, knight capture c3, rook to c1. Probably this is what white is hoping. But after bishop to d3, Black managed to save his piece and in fact won a pawn in a broad daylight. The second move knight to d2 is more natural in this position as it is protecting the e4 and if it's required then white can also play the move f3 and what can be the wrong in this move? Well of course everything looks so good except one problem that black has this lethal reply. BAM! <laughs> so black says, sweetie, sorry, but you cannot save your pawn. Knight captures e4, what else? Challenging black's idea. And here comes the whole point behind sacrificing the piece. Black has this magical move, queen to h4. So not only attacking twice on e4 knight, but that poor pawn on f2 is pinned down. And that means white can no longer defend on e4. One high profile game here continues with castle on the king side. But after queen captures e4, once again black emerged with an extra pawn. And in fact did manage to win at the end. Kindly check out rest of the game in the PGN which will give you a very good idea how to convert your extra advantage. That's it guys. I hope you enjoy and learn this wonderful trappy line in the mainline Chigorin defense. In tournament practice, if you reach this position, remember play the move bishop to h5. Allow your opponent to play a3. And after the following sequence, we have the star move bishop to g6, which wins the pawn on 11th move of the game. And after that, with accurate play, you can get some great victories. Thank you for watching this video. Feel free to like, subscribe and comment. And I'll meet you in my next episode very soon. Bye and take care.